Welcome to Out of the Box, a program focused on electrical technology innovations with you in mind. Hello, I'm Jim McNeil. Welcome to today's edition of Out of the Box. Today, we're going to look into one of the most critical components in any electrical system, circuit breaker panels. They're the hub of the wheel for power distribution, and they're the center of attention when it comes to explosion protection. We've seen a lot of evolutionary changes in breaker panels over the years, but today we're going to look at a more revolutionary change that is starting to spread across North America. It's being used by key process facilities like Shell, Suncor, and Syncrude. So I've invited Steve from Stahl to fill us in. Good to have you with us, Steve. Thank you, Jim. Great to be here. Now, we're hearing reports of really big savings on installation time and labor costs with these new breaker panels. What's the story here? Well, Jim, let's take a look at a couple of these different panels, and I'll show you. Now, these are circuit breaker panels designed to be used in hazardous locations. Mm, yeah, I see them all the time in process facilities. Right. Now, they're used for lighting distribution, power distribution, heat tracing, things like that. Now, for decades, the only explosion-resistant technology really available has been the cast metal enclosure system for class one, division one environments like you see here. Mm -hmm. And division one is for an environment where you could have an explosive atmosphere under normal conditions. That's right. But over 85% of installations today are actually now division two locations where you would only have a volatile atmosphere under abnormal working conditions. Mm. And division two wiring requirements have more options and are, well, different than that of division one. Now, here's a traditional cast metal Division I breaker panel. With this technology, the explosion protection is within the enclosure itself. Okay, the breakers are arcing devices. Now, if the breaker were to trigger an explosion, this heavy cast enclosure is designed to actually contain that explosion. And that's why you got all these bolts. Mm -hmm. And they all have to be torqued to the manufacturer's specifications to maintain the safety protection. That's right. Now, the enclosure is designed to contain any explosion or fire, so it can't be left open. Right. In most environments, with a volatile atmosphere, you're going to need a hot work permit just to open it up. Mm -hmm. So, if you need to change out a breaker, how long would that take? Well, you got about 25 volts, so on the older style panels, it's going to take you about two hours to change out a breaker. Mm -hmm. And since the bolts on the enclosure are the key safety factor, if any of them are left off or not tightened properly, it creates a safety hazard. Right. Now, we all know that most accidents happen during maintenance or a turnaround. So you can kind of get a situation where the panel is left open, then the worker needs to leave, either for lunch or, or the end of the shift even. And the work's not done. So what does he do? Yeah, there's a temptation for someone to just uh, tighten the corner bolts or just hand tighten the bolts for a fast means to get right back in there. Exactly. Now, it's even conceivable that someone would just leave it open. Exactly, and that's when you get a safety hazard that could cause a catastrophe. No, I see you've got one of the newer panels here. This is a new patented product from Stahl. Now, how long does it take to open this up? Just watch. Want to see that again? You mean that's it? <laughs> Since all the internal components are factory sealed, there's no exposed contacts. On this stainless panel, instead of removing and reinstalling 25 volts for access, all you do is turn a latch. So, how long would it take to change a breaker here? About 15 minutes, Jim. Wow, 15 minutes instead of two hours? <laughs> so, so, what could take all day on the older panels, you can get done in about an hour. That's right. But here's another huge feature. Now, I want you to take a look at the bottom of this heavier cast enclosure. Can you count how many drilled and tapped openings there are? Uh, let's see, three, six, I got 10. Right. Now, here's the killer when installing these panels. Each opening requires a conduit seal. Now, the installer not only has to purchase 10 EYS fittings, he needs to carefully separate the wires, put his fiber in, then correctly mix and pour this cement-like compound. Now, each of those seals is going to take 30 to 40 minutes to install. That's about six hours. Wow. Now, what about the stall panel? It's factory sealed, so you don't need any conduit seals. Well, how is that possible? Well, Jim, where the explosion protection of the cast product is in the enclosure itself, the stall's panel's protection is right inside the encapsulated breakers, so you don't need seals. 
Now, personally, I not only think of this as labor savings, but it also eliminates a lot of potential safety hazards. Well, I see you've got another breaker box here. Is this also from Stone? Yeah, this is what's called an FRP box. That's fiberglass reinforced polyester. Okay, and where would you use this? Well, this would be installed in the exact same environments as the stainless steel unit. Class one, division two. Oh, and since these boxes are not metal. They don't corrode like metal, exactly. So these meet NEMA 4X standards, which are much higher than that met by many cast panels. Well, it looks like you've got, let's see, six bolts there. And a window, so you can see the breakers without even opening up the enclosure. But again, six is all you need, since the box is not the explosion container. Well, let's see what's in here. Boy, you've got a huge wiring space there. Oh, yeah. You've got easy access to bring wires into the enclosure. And since the box is not the explosion container, there are no seals required. The breakers can easily be removed. And this box appears to be a lot lighter than the older style. What's the comparison there? Well, most traditional panels hold 24 breakers and weighs hundreds of pounds. Now, this is a cast metal 12 circuit panel that weighs 135 pounds. But the newer stall panels only weigh about 52 pounds. Well, what about this one? This FRP panel is smaller, as you can see, so a single person can carry it, Jim, even you. <laughs> Thanks. So uh, how does that weight difference affect, say, installation? Well, obviously, with cast metal boxes weighing hundreds of pounds, you're going to need special equipment just to lift them into place. Mm -hmm. And with that much weight, you're probably going to need C-channel to support it so there's welding involved and so on. Yeah, but with the new stall panel, a couple of guys can lift it right into place. So overall, how much labor time does this save us? Well, the older style panel with 24 circuits would typically take about 10 hours to install. If you need mounting holes, that's extra time, extra expense. These stall panels only take about two hours to install, and stall will include the custom mounting holes at no extra cost. So what's the bottom line? What's the total difference in installation cost? Well, with the stall solution, you're looking at a cost savings of well over $2,000 right off the bat. And that doesn't include the cost of extra support structure and equipment needed to install the older style panels. Mm -hmm. Well, plus the people to operate that equipment, et cetera. It all adds up. Okay. A designer might just go with the older style if that's what they're comfortable with. How are these new panels being accepted? Oh, the reviews from the field have been excellent. Syncrude and Shell are just two customers that have had really good success with these panels. So they're really catching on all over North America. Well, uh, what about other parts of the world? The stall solution is already widely used all over the world. Okay. Well, let me ask you about main circuit breakers. I don't see them here. Well, Jim, this is really just a direct comparison of units. Personally, for me, I prefer having a disconnect switch, like the one here, and have a J-Fuse upstream. However, we can also provide a main circuit breaker option if needed. Mm -hmm. well, what about exposure to energized circuits? Okay, well, as you can see, on the FRP unit, 